737, Nashville's Morning News on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Welcome on into your Friday, May 31st. Appreciate you being here. My name is Dan Mandis, along with uh, Jay Harper. Jeff Malinoff is uh, in for Johnny B. Johnny's here. We're training young Jeff. Want to get to uh, Matthew Hurt, our grassroots political analyst here on Nashville's Morning News. And um, Matthew, always great to have you on. So let's talk a little bit about your feelings about the verdict. I mean, I don't think that it was a surprise to you. It wasn't a surprise to me. You know, uh, Attorney General of Virginia, Jason Meares, issued a statement yesterday. Basically, the FEC would not have gone forward for the uh, did not go forward with this. The U.S. Attorney's Office did not go forward with this. This is a, a, a prosecutor in New York who is politically motivated, who ran on prosecuting Donald Trump mm -hmm. and who created this process as a show trial uh, to put Donald Trump on trial. Van Jones even said it on, on television. You know, nobody else would have been uh, prosecuted under this. This guy's name is Donald Trump, and that's why they did it. And I think that is really fired up grassroots Republicans who are now seeing a two-tiered criminal justice system, and one of those tiers is being weaponized against uh, their presumptive nominee for the Republican, uh, the Republican presidential campaign. Matthew, let me ask you, uh, because I was talking to myself earlier trying to figure out some of this polling, where, you know, you have, and I don't have it in front of me now, but they, they showed, you know, where it was like 74 percent of independents don't care about this and whatever. But, you know, my question is, OK, so if 74 percent of independents, it will not impact their vote. But that means that it could impact the vote of 26 percent of independents. And if those independents are in certain counties in battleground states, that could be an issue. Because this perhaps is going to be a really close race. We we don't really know, obviously. But is there in your mind the possibility that this could hurt Donald Trump if truly the former president does lose even a small modicum of support? There is a segment of the American population who feels like they haven't gotten a fair shake. We sometimes call this the forgotten man. These are blue-collar, uh, hard-working men and women. They, they appear in, in places like rural Tennessee, in central Pennsylvania, in, in places like Michigan. And, and your assessment is right. Of the independents who do actually care about this, some of them believe that they haven't gotten a fair shake, that the American dream is just out of reach for them because of something, uh, that, you know, the way the system is created. And that could break in Donald Trump's favor. Uh, I think for the 74 percent, you know, there's a segment of, of Democrats who, who always believed he was guilty of something. There's a segment of Republicans who don't care whether he's guilty or not. Um, but this will play out uh, to the thousands of voters in in these critical counties in places like Michigan and places like Pennsylvania and Georgia and other places where it could make an impact uh, headed into November. Let me ask you, Matthew Hurt, uh, joining us, our grassroots political analyst on Super Talk Minute 97. So when do you think we'll find some actual, if there is such a thing, some actual accurate polling on the specific situation that we find ourselves in today in those battleground states where they'll go out and they'll ask people, OK, so this is what's going on. What do you think about this Fulton County or how do you feel about this in Detroit, Michigan? One, you know, one poll doesn't tell you much, but a series of polls um illustrates a trend and as we head toward july 11th which is when the the court is going to make its decision uh and it's about a week before the republican national convention in milwaukee that's when more people are going to begin to tune in so as the media coverage ramps up in late june uh later next month and, and early into july we may see some numbers um but but Many Americans aren't, again, they're not yet tuned in, and most Americans don't pay attention to the presidential contest until after August. And so what we're seeing now is is the numbers aren't really going to budge that much, but as the sort of crescendo of what the, the court is going to decide to do in July, uh, that will be the the first point where we can start to make an educated guess at where voters might fall on this. And then that becomes the, the new narrative. 
uh, depending upon what the court decides, is it probation? Is it jail time, which I think is is a, a radical departure from from what the court would likely do? Um, we'll see Americans start to form a more coherent opinion on this, and that'll play out in the polling. You know what I wonder, uh, Matthew, is there's a lot of things about this this trial. I mean, I've documented we've been documenting this, documenting this for months now, but there's a lot of things in this trial that are just complete BS. Part of what I wonder is those people that you were talking about that they don't actually pay close attention until after August. The people that are just now sort of wait, what happened? As they look at this case and hopefully they look at some of the details of this case, including the unconstitutional nature of this judge's jury instructions, it's my hope that the people will realize, well, this is a bunch of BS. And and so the longer the time goes on and the people learn more about what happened in this case, the more it will favor Donald Trump. Could this whole thing have backfired on Joe Biden? You know, it may very well backfire. I look at it from this perspective, and I'll be honest with you, Dan. I didn't follow much of the trial at all, and I think there are so many variables in this that the average American, the person who's working 40-plus hours a week, who's getting their kids to to band practice and soccer soccer practice, who's going to church on Sunday or Wednesday nights or both, they don't have a lot of time to deal with the hundreds and hundreds of variables that came out of this court case. And so some people may just say, you know, there's too much here. And I don't really care about any of it, and it's not going to it's not going to play either into my decision or there's so much here and something seems fishy. And I'm going to side with Donald Trump anyway, because it seems complicated. And to, to me, who's just trying to make ends meet and provide for my family, this seems like a burden for anyone. And they may casually side um, with with President Trump on this. Matthew Hurt, grassroots political analyst, is joining us on WTN. Uh, I thought that. The guy really that had the best statement, um, at least for me, was the statement by Andrew McCarthy. And he's, of course, uh, one of my favorites. And and this is what he said uh, regarding all of this. The internal polling of the of the Democrats has to tell them, it would seem to me, that being able to call Trump a convicted felon in the run up to the election is worth x number of points Mm -hmm. in the battleground states so even if it fires up his base and it should this is going to change american prosecution and the american justice system for the worse because the the flag of politicized prosecution has been planted here in a way that it's never been planted before but as it plays politically i think the question is how much is it worth to have that talking point for them in the run up to the election. So it is all about Donald Trump. I was uh, talking earlier. CNN actually had convicted felon Donald Trump to speak at 11 o'clock or whatever it was. So clearly you're going to have these uh, anti-Trump media outlets just playing this up big time. So my question is, uh, number one, are they overplaying the two words convicted felon? That's number one. And number two, the economy is still inflation is still bad. You've got prices that are still high gas prices, of course, heading into summer starting to go up as well. So I just think that the Biden administration and the Democrats are overplaying convicted felon Donald Trump. Well, to your to your first question, I think Donald Trump is very likely to lean into that. Yep. You know, you've already seen some of the imagery from the Trump campaign and, and, and supporters showing sort of leaning into that that terminology and that theme and i think that is a theme that that pits donald trump again against the swamp against the political establishment against the 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 stacked deck that exists in washington and in the courtroom in new york and and so there'll be a bit of wrangling on the messaging are democrats going to to be fired up about that certainly but are republicans and and grassroots conservatives also going to be fired up about it yes but to the average voter, what again, what do they care about? They yeah. care about the cost of, of the grocery bill every week or the cost of the, the energy bill and where they're going to be able to get their energy. Are we going to still have um, you know, access to an all-of-the-above energy policy that makes it affordable for families to keep the lights on and to go to the grocery store and to be able to drive without having to charge your, you, you know, charge your car everywhere? And so I think those are the bread-and-butter issues, uh, that and then immigration and then sort of foreign policy. Is America still 
um, the, the shining city on the hill, the beacon of freedom, but also that purveyor of truth beyond our borders that keeps the, the global order, the, that keeps world peace to a certain extent. And under Donald Trump, we did not engage in foreign entanglements to the extent that we see here in Ukraine and everything that's going on. And so I think that that is the assessment that, that Americans will, will begin to consider as they head into the general election. Uh, Matthew, let me ask you a final question. You've got a lot of folks, including Megyn Kelly, who I'll play the audio next hour. But, you know, she said and you, you actually just heard uh, Andrew McCarthy say the same thing, which is, you know, the Democrats have now opened up a Pandora's box. So this is a line that cannot be uncrossed lawfare and and that's turned into warfare and you know political parties going after presidential candidates i'm thinking bill clinton and whitewater i'm thinking bill clinton with paula jones i'm thinking a lot more focus on joe biden there's a lot of things that the republicans can do if they want to take off the gloves fight you know bare knuckle if they want to do what the democrats have done they can i mean do you do you see do you see Washington, D.C. and politics as changed forever because of this? Mitt Romney said it very well a couple of weeks ago. Joe Biden could have pressured the prosecutor to step back from this. He could have said, you know, cooler heads should prevail, and he did not. And and that has and very likely will open this Pandora's box. And, and we will be in a situation in Washington where whichever party is in power, they will use the levers – um, to engage in this kind of activity, and it is an unfortunate step in this direction where, as I've said sometimes, government is now uh, the punishment that the winners in the last election deal out to the losers, and, uh, and this is just another tool that, unfortunately, Joe Biden and the Democrats have provided uh, to anybody who, who gets power in the next election. Well, it's funny, too, because you said that, you know, Joe Biden could have told them to uh, ease up on the situation. Joe Biden actually provided through the DOJ, the prosecutor. So, I mean, no matter how close you look at this, there, there's like 15 different talking points here for the Republicans to grab onto. And all of them are legit. So we'll continue to cover this uh, for folks all day long here at Super Talk 99.7 WTN and Matthew Hurt. Always appreciate your spot on analysis. How can folks find you on Twitter? I'm on Twitter at Matthew Hurt, M-A-T-T-H-E-W-H-U-R-T-T. All right. We'll probably talk to you next week. Have a great weekend. It is 751 on Nashville's Morning News on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. I got a question for the... um, Super text line, the members nutrition super text line. Do you want the Republicans to fight fire with fire? You know, we just talked about uh, we just talked about what Megyn Kelly said. I'll play the uh, audio bite in the uh, eight o'clock hour. Megyn Kelly is basically saying that the Republicans have to do what the Democrats are doing. So my question to you, there's two ways of thinking. No, 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 no. Democrats are going to do what they're going to do, but we can't lower ourselves to what the Democrats are doing. All right. So that's one way to think about it. The other way to think about it is tit for tat. You got to fight fire with fire. So if that's what the Democrats are going to do, then Republicans have to do the same thing. We just have to do it better.